When you're working with a distinct formula, there are two things it can return, unique values or distinct values. So what exactly is the difference between those two? Well, that's what we're going to explore in this lesson. And again, we're keeping our data set very simple for these examples so that everything is really easy to understand. I have a list of countries just here and we have the population of each of those countries in millions. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this dynamic. So if more countries are added onto the bottom, everything will automatically update. So let's press Control T. Yes, my table has headers. Let's click on OK. And I don't like that table style. Let's just have no table style in there. And I'm going to name my table. Let's call this country underscore pop. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a unique that returns distinct values. And it is worth noting that the distinct option is the default for the unique function. Now let's construct a formula that returns the distinct countries. And it's worth noting that distinct is the default. So if we type in unique, let's select our array because we want a distinct list of the countries, comma. Now we move into our optional arguments. And the first optional argument is by col. So we need to tell Excel if we want to return unique columns or unique rows. Now we want to return unique rows because our countries are listed in the rows. So we need a false in there. And then the final option, this is where we're defining if this is a distinct or a unique formula. Now we haven't really discussed what the difference is between these two. So this seems like a good point to do that. What distinct means is that it will return a list of all of the distinct items. So pretty much like when we did the first unique, it's just going to look at our list of countries and just return one of each. That's a distinct list. Whereas unique will return only the countries that appear once in a selected range. So that's the difference between the two. Now we're doing distinct in this example, so we also need a false on the end there. And what you'll find is if we close the bracket and hit enter, we're going to get what we got in the last lesson when we just did unique without any of the additional arguments. And that is because distinct is the default. So this is exactly the same. We have nine distinct countries. Now let's take a look at the difference if we use the other argument. So we're going to do unique again. We're going to select the same array. We're returning unique rows, so we need a false, but this time we're going to say true, return items that appear exactly once. So if we have true as our argument on the end here, the list is completely different. And that's because now it's only returning items that appear exactly once in this list. So Australia is in here only once, New Zealand, South Africa and Brazil. Those aren't repeated at all throughout the selected range. And just to finish up so you can see how this works when we have new countries added to the table. I'm going to click at the bottom here and let's add in, we're going to go for Spain. Now check out what happens to both of these lists when I press tab. You can see that Spain has been added to the bottom of both of them. It's added to distinct because it's another distinct country and it's also added to unique because Spain currently appears only once in the table. But if I was to add another entry and let's do Spain again, you'll see that it disappears from the unique list, but it still stays in the distinct list. So hopefully that illustrates to you the difference between these two, both of them equally as useful in different situations. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.